to Free Academic English. I'm Geraldine, and today we're going to learn how to learn new vocabulary. Today we're going to talk about learning new vocabulary. The problem that many students of English have is that they don't remember the new vocabulary. And actually, this is the, the part of the language that you're never gonna stop learning. I mean, a native speaker that's not all the words that exist in English. Again, think about yourself. What is your native language? Mine is Spanish. I can't possibly know all the words that exist in Spanish. So far less, I'm gonna know all the words in English. But I do my best and I keep learning because I've already learned the grammar, the pronunciation, and, uh, and that's it. And then what you get? vocabulary and that's what you will always continue learning now there are words that are similar to the words that we have in our native language and so those are easier to learn but there are some false friends that we might talk about some other day but meanwhile you can check this video here about false friends it's not mine it's just one that i liked and i think that you should watch. The point is that we're never gonna stop learning vocabulary, but you cannot pretend to learn 10 words, 20 words, or 100 words a day. It's not humanly possible. I mean, maybe it is, no, no, it's not. Maybe you're a genius again, but normally you don't. And the key, and of course the key is repetition. Now, research says that we can learn um, we can learn groups of words up to seven. So, if you check your textbook, if you've ever studied the language English, you see that they present the vocabulary, you know, in groups, um, similar words, words related to similar topics, and they are usually six, seven, or eight, no more than that, because that's what you can. Uh, you can get and they continue repeating those words throughout the unit of the book this is what usually happens with books um, personally um, I mean that that's the most you can get but what about the least wouldn't it be just one or two words to focus on so this is what I recommend because that's the way I learn and maybe that's a good way for you too. Just taking one or two words because you will have a big context with maybe 20 words that you don't understand, but you want to focus on one of them. And you will learn that one because if you try to learn the 20, I mean, maybe you can look in the dictionary and see the definitions or whatever, but that's gonna make you understand maybe what you're reading or what you're hearing or whatever, but you're not gonna learn all of those, all of those words. Choose one or two from that group of words that are new to you, and those are the one, the ones, or that one that you choose is the one that you're really going to learn, that's going to become part of you. So what you do, you take, and uh, word and then you can do whatever you want with it the the point again is that you do what feels better for you you know that i don't like or maybe you don't know it i don't like translating so i don't go and look for the translation of the word unless it's strictly necessary i go to the dictionary but i go to a monolingual dictionary and i try to understand the meaning of the word. And I'm not saying this just because I already speak English. I told you that I'm learning Italian too, and I can't speak Italian. I'm learning from zero. But if I have a word that I don't understand, I don't go to an Italian Spanish or an Italian English dictionary. I go to an Italian dictionary with explanations in Italian. And since Italian is kind of similar to Spanish, really, I, and I, I, I get the meaning even though I don't understand exactly what they say, but 
uh, that becomes part of me. It's more meaningful for me. Maybe it can be for you. There are monolingual dictionaries for learners, and I will also give you the links. Now, but that is just one possibility, the one I like. Maybe you feel good about finding a bilingual dictionary and knowing exactly the meaning or the translation of the word, and that's okay if it works for you. Another one that I love, of course, is uh, making a picture. Well, it doesn't work with all the words, but mostly for, uh, you know, adjectives or nouns. But if possible, oh, I mean, it helps you retain a lot more because you are drawing or just getting uh, the meaning from a picture. I would do that a lot more if I knew how to draw. I don't, so I just, I, I prefer really writing definitions or things, but the important thing is that you get the word written down in a notebook, on a virtual uh, sheet, uh, I don't know, you choose, but not just here, but you have to have it somewhere because you're gonna go back to it. If not, you're not gonna learn it because the key is going to be the repetition of that. You've seen that with the, dic with the dictionaries, there's usually an example. So there you go. You also read the example and start looking for the word. This is the fun part, because it's not just that you know the meaning of the word, now you have to see it used in real life. And the dictionary gives you an example and that's cool. But there must be tons of other examples, so you can do that. You can Google the word and find how it is used. You can Google it in images and find how what images you get from the word you have. You can look for it in songs and you can find songs where you have that particular word. Or in what else? I wrote this. Ah, of course, or maybe you you can find it in movies, and and that usually happens to me, but not on purpose. Like if I'm learning a new word, I do my process of writing it down, knowing what it is, and well, I start thinking about the word too much, or maybe not, but I just know that this is a new word, one new word, and I write it down, sometimes I don't. And then it happens that I watch TV and I see the word. And I'm like, oh my God, how cool is that? Uh, I don't know if the word was there before and I didn't see it, or I saw it because I had the word present. I, I wasn't like hunting, word hunting while watching TV. But I saw it and well, I could see a new use of it. And that happens uh, usually when I watch TV. And that's why I love watching TV, well, Netflix or movies. Uh, when I watch in English, I, I try to watch them with subtitles in English. Because sometimes it's not just hearing, but looking at the word and finding the word. I love, I love doing that. And I'm doing that in Italian now too. So you find it, you see it in different contexts, in movies, in maybe in books, magazines, whatever. And then you have to use it. At least try to use it. It doesn't matter if you use it incorrectly. If you share how you use it, you will probably get some feedback of someone telling you to use it right. This happens to me in Italian. People put, uh, I'm subscribed to many um, Instagram um, teachers. I follow many of them. And when they put a question in Italian, I kind of get the question. And I, I, I try, I attempt to answer it. And 99% of the time, I get the answer incorrectly. I mean, I, I can't express myself correctly yet but the teacher will correct me and I love it because that's the way you learn when you go back and see what you got wrong. Actually, I made a video about how you learn by making mistakes. Watch it. And then you have to go back to the word, to read in the definition, to going back to the examples, maybe to the song. 
the idea is that it becomes part of your vocabulary, not of the vocabulary that you have in your notebook. So you should check it like the following day. Then you can check it two days later, maybe then a week later, maybe two weeks later, maybe a month later, because if you just learn it and go back a month later, uh, you, you're not gonna remember. You will say, all oh, right, that was the meaning, but you haven't worked on it. You will have not worked on it. So it's important that what it's fresh in your brain, you use it, you continue understanding it. You will see that maybe the third, fourth or fifth time you see it, you will actually get the meaning of the word or you will feel more confident to use it. Maybe you can't use it with someone, but as, but as I told you, try to share it, um, write, maybe you just, well, I, I strongly recommend the, the writing a journal and so you can use it there if possible and if not we'll also use it because if you don't use it you are gonna forget it yeah you're not really going to forget it because it's there in your brain and when somebody tells you the meaning you will say oh yeah I learned that I learned that but I forgot the idea is that it doesn't stay in your sleeping memory. It's that it stays in your active memory. And that I, li I like that. I like that you can continue working on words that are meaningful to you, that you're gonna use, that are important to you, that mean something to you. Because it's just a random word, you're not, you are not gonna remember it. And what's the point of it? Now, if you wanna go beyond you have to look for related words, synonyms, antonyms, words in the same family, from the words with the same root. And well, that's going to be another video. Thank you for watching till the end. Please share, subscribe, and I hope to see you soon.